Jesus Christ is Lord, and one day your knee will bow. I truly believe it is the grace of God that you are even watching this video. The revelation and the word that you're about to listen to and watch literally dropped me to my knees. When I was working on the last video that we uploaded, exposing the UFC, the Lord visited me in the kitchen very late, four in the morning, and gave me this revelation. And he told me, what I tell you in the darkness, speak that into the light. Please don't take this message for granted. Please have a pen and a pad of paper. Have your word, the sword of the spirit. And before the message starts, please pause this video and pray. Repent. Ask the Lord Jesus Christ to wash you in his blood, to renew the spirit of your mind, and to bind and break any powers of darkness that would try to hinder you from receiving this message. I'm telling you, saints, in 20 years of walking with the Lord, I've never had a message about the end days hit me like this. In this video, you are going to receive the mystery of the image of the beast. The word of God says in Revelation chapter 13, verse 18, here is the wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. There are thousands of videos online, saints. Everybody's claiming they know what the image of the beast is. They know who the Antichrist is. Saints of God, the revelation that God has given me is going to change your life because it's already changed mine. It has literally caused me to go to a whole new level of getting ready and staying ready in this last hour. We're going to show you why there's such an increase of sin and murder and violence and what Satan's plan is to cause so many to so easily receive his mark. We're going to show you the mystery of the image of the beast. All I ask as a servant of the Most High God is that you take this message seriously, that you, you get your life right with Christ. So take a walk with me, but be patient and write the scriptures down because you're going to learn things that a lot of these so-called preachers don't even understand. And I give all the glory to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So take a walk with me, but I must warn you, the path you're about to walk with me down is one that is not known by billions of people. So without wasting any more time, I'll see you at the dinner table. Are y'all ready for this? I do have to, I'm just keeping it real with you. I got to pray again. Because what I'm about to show you literally changed my life. It was late, like 4, 4.30ish. And I was wrapping up with the whole MMA thing and pancreation and the octagon and all of that. And the Lord said, my son, I have something way more important to show you. So Lord Jesus, guide me as I finish off this message and I pray all of those watching will be patient and take it serious and that they will be changed by the word of the Lord that is coming through my mouth and they will be changed by the word of the Lord in Jesus Christ's name. Don't let the enemy block them from hearing this, Lord. Bind every demonic spirit on anyone that's listening. Bind it, Lord Jesus. Command them to be silent and unable to hinder or distract them. And bind the spirit of the beast. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I had to do that for a reason, okay? You might not understand. Why is it in this last hour, violence is flooding the earth. You have movies like The Purge, The Saw, Hostel, murder movies, violent TV shows like Power and all of these shows, right? It's so violent now. 
wicked websites like World Star Hip Hop, Call of Duty, War Games, Violent Games, Violent Music, Drill Music, and the list goes on and on and on. What is this? What is the agenda of Satan? I'm about to show it to you in Jesus' name. In all glory to the King of glory, the light of the world. It's only because of his light that we're able to expose these things that have been hidden in the darkness. So we can show it to you in hopes that you will change. Why all of this violence? I want you to go to Matthew 24. Look at what it says in verse 37. In Jesus' name. But as the days of Noah were, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. This our time where we're living right now. It's the last hour. Make no mistake about it. Because the generation that has the mark of the beast, the Antichrist, has to have also the return of Christ. In one generation. So we are this generation. So Jesus is as the days of Noah were. And a lot of times we go the Nephilim route, right? Fallen angels, giving birth to giants, and all of this is reality. But let's go to Genesis chapter 6. Look at what it says. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I want you to see verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts and of his heart was only evil continually. See, you wonder, man, why everybody got smartphones, iPhones, laptops, televisions, even gas stations. You pull up the pump gas, you looking at a TV screen. Every store you walk into, worldly music playing. It's to make people continually on evil. Just like in the days of Noah. But let's go deeper. Look at what it says in verse 11. Now the earth also was corrupt before God. And the earth was filled with what? Violence. You see this? Filled with violence. Is not the earth filled with violence? Look at the murder rate in Chicago alone. Mothers are killing their own children. This is violence on a whole new level. And now they're trying to release dark matter to take over people, to increase. Dark matter to the violent tendencies of a human is like adding fuel to a campfire. You understand? All of these wicked shows and the tell eye vision and evil music and all of these things. Why is Satan doing this? Remember what I said earlier. The word of God says Satan comes down with great wrath because he knows his time is short. But have you ever considered when he comes down with great wrath, he wants to infect the world with his wrath and with his violence? It's not, that, it's not just that he's coming down with wrath on us because he's wrathful at us, but he wants to try to transform us to be like him. Wow. Wow. So as I was meditating on this late last night, early in the morning, I said, Lord, there has to be something else. You use the whole UFC thing as a footstool to bring us here. And that's when the Lord said, they're feeding the beast. And I'm like, I'm just telling you an intimate, personal thing. If you're at my dinner table and you're talking with me, I'm telling you things that are private to me. I'm speaking with the Lord. I'm fellowshipping with Him. And I start downloading all of these things. I'm going to show it to you right now. Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 3. We got to be quick. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. As you're going there, remember what the main slogan is for Monster Energy Drink, which is in most of these satanic octagons, which we know now without a shadow of a doubt, you can't support or condone anything like it or of it, because then you're in pancreation and you honor the false gods. Right? Go to Ecclesiastes 3. Watch this. Watch this. 
Look at what it says in verse 18. In Jesus' name, I said in my heart concerning the estate of the sons of men, that God might manifest them, comma, and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. They're beasts. You see this? But why would it say that God might manifest them? See, this was the hope. This was prophecy that when the Son of God would come to the earth through the womb of a virgin, walk perfect, fulfill the law, conquer death, hell, and the grave, that he would create the New Testament and make new and create a new creature out of us, that we would be manifested sons of God and no longer of the curse of Adam. But notice it said that man altogether... Notice what it says, that they might see that they themselves are beasts. So then I said, okay, Lord, where are you taking me with this? So we, it refers us right back to, it reverts us right back to Revelation chapter 13 with the mark of the beast, you see? I'm asking you to please stick with me here. Don't get distracted. Don't put this down and stay here and finish this video. Go to Revelation 13. So why is man considered a beast? Revelation 13. Now there's other Revelation scriptures about the beast, but because of time, we're just going to deal with the main one. Verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon the horns... Upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the names of blasphemy. Verse 4. And they worshipped the dragon which had power, excuse me, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast who was able to make war with him? Because you know the Antichrist. The literal man antichrist because you got the spirit of antichrist and then you got the literal anthropos that means man so it's a literal man as well so you're gonna have this they're gonna you're gonna see there's a spirit of antichrist and there's also the man antichrist right he's a man of war he's a violent man he comes in peaceably but he's really a violent person just like these fake Christians, they say they know Christ, the God of peace, but they feed off violence. They love violence, you see. But I want you to keep going down, though. It talks about read the whole chapter if you've got time. But I want you to simply go down to 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the what? The beast. So this image of the beast now becomes alive. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he caused all both small, great, rich, poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. That no man might buy or sell except he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Listen, here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. You see this? But notice 17 says that he that either had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of the beast. So there's three ways somebody can be sealed up in eternal damnation, in, in eternal damnation with this. Either have the mark, the name, or the number of the beast. You see this? Now we know on the surface... We can't take a RFID chip. We can't get a part of biometrics, right? And the list goes on. But this is the outward surface. We got to lay the ax to the root of the mark of the beast and the image of the beast. Most YouTube channels only deal with the outward, which is not going to help you like you think if you don't get this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that we're giving you right now through Christ. So why is it, check this out, Ecclesiastes says man himself is a beast, but yet in Revelation 13, there's a mark of the beast. What is this about a beast? And you notice throughout the Old Testament, it's man and beast are usually side by side in scriptures. But it goes deeper than that. Go to Psalm 73. 
Psalm 73. Watch this. Psalm 73, verse 22. So foolish was I, said David, and ignorant I was as a beast before thee. You see this? What was David really saying? Well, let's do precept upon precept. Let's really get to the, to the meat of this message, right? Go to 1 Corinthians 15. Look at what Paul says in Jesus' name. Watch this. You're going to see how real it is. It's going to all come together. I'm telling you, your life is never going to be the same. Glory be to Christ. So this is 1 Corinthians 15. Look at what it says in verse 32. And then in 31 first. I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. Why does Paul die daily? We're going to get into that in a minute. Listen to this. If after the manner of men, I have fought with what? Beasts at Ephesus. Wait a minute. What? Do you think, you know, these cemetery seminaries that tell you he must have got into a beef with a bear traveling to Damascus. No, Paul was telling you that he was at war with men that are beasts. Are you catching it yet? Go to Titus chapter 1. Look at what it says in Titus 1, 12. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said the Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. You see this beast again, right? But let's go deeper. Second Peter, come on. Chapter 2. Second Peter, chapter 2. Look at what it says. Second Peter 2, look at what it says in verse 12. But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not. And shall utterly perish in their own corruption. You think this is talking about actual beasts in the field? Beasts in the wilderness? Or is he talking about people? Wow. So now we got more than one man testifying the same revelation. But let's see if we can find another, though. Go to Jude. Go to Jude. Go to verse 10. It's almost the same wording. Watch this. That's how you know the Holy Spirit operating through men and women. You can get the confirmation, I'm telling you. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally as brute beasts. In those things they corrupt themselves. Same wordplay, almost to the T. Yet two different Mighty men of God. So what was really going on? Where is where are we going with this, right? Because I'm I have to reveal to you what Satan's agenda is in this last hour. How is he gonna cause so many to receive the mark of the beast? Why is it gonna be so easy for most to receive the mark? Sadly, many even in the Sunday churches. Because remember, you can be in a car garage and not be a car, right? What is really going on? Go to Hebrews 13. Look at what it says in verse 11. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. I want you to remember that for later on. As I was meditating on this, God brought me back to the book of Genesis. Now, notice in Genesis chapter 3, when Eve is deceived by the serpent, or we know as Lucifer, right? Who was in the garden. He was already up and down the mountain of God, right? Notice, he's, notice the word of God says the serpent was more subtle than all the other beasts of the field. So the serpent was a type of beast, That's when it hit me. Adam and Eve were changed when they committed the sin and turned their back on God by disobeying him. They were changed. You notice their mind. 
you notice their mind was changed immediately. They no longer had a connection with God the same way. Adam was no longer the king of the earth ruling over all the other creatures. They hid from God. There was a disconnect. But why? What happened? I would like to say to you that when Adam sinned and Eve sinned, they took on the spirit of the beast and their, their bodies were changed because they were something different before they committed that great sin. And we know that sin entered into them. But what did happen to their bodies? Because by default, we're all temples. But who inhabits us? Who took up refuge in Adam and Eve when they sinned and obeyed that serpent, that beast who was more subtle than all the other beasts? Now, even though God loved Adam, he knew he became corrupted. He now became the temple of the spirit of the beast. And he is now transforming into a God said, Adam, you need to leave the garden because you're now infected. But the Most High prophesied, declaring his mighty son, Jesus Christ, would crush the head of the serpent who had seed, by the way. If you read it in the original Hebrew. I don't know about this one, brother, words. You, you going extra. Okay. What happened when they gave birth? What happened when Cain and Abel were born? The spirit of the beast transferred. And all of a sudden, Cain murdered his brother like a vicious animal. The spirit of the beast. I want you to go to the Gospel of John chapter 6. We're going to bring it all together. I'm telling you, this is going to change your life. Gospel of John chapter 6. It's a big chapter. We're going to read verse 32. We're going to read verses in between to get to the meat of this message. Jesus said unto them in verse 32, Truly, I, truly, truly, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which come down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then they said unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And what did Jesus say unto them? I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that you also have seen me and believe not. But I said unto you that you also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believe on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So now they're murmuring amongst themselves, right? I want you to scroll all the way down to 48. He, Jesus says, I am the bread. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat man in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven that man may eat thereof and not die. Watch how deep it gets. You ready for it? I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give his flesh is and the listen now. And the bread that I will give is my flesh. Listen now. And the bread that I will give is my what? Flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. And the Jews therefore strove amongst themselves saying, what can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said unto him, Jesus said unto them, Truly, truly, I say to you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you shall have no life in you. 
Whosoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwells in me, and I in him. Are you catching it yet? Notice in verse 66, it says many of the disciples turned away from Jesus. But wait a minute. It's the gospel of John chapter 6, verse 66. This is a hidden message that 666 is hidden in the gospel of John chapter 6. Notice at the 66 verse, which equals three sixes. It says many disciples turned away from Jesus. This is a supernatural warning from the Most High God that when the mark of the beast rises up, many so-called Christians will walk away from Jesus when 666 is approached, when 666 is implemented. But notice Jesus Christ says, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood. And some are scratching their head going, how are we going to chew on the arm of Jesus? This is a spiritual matter. The life, ah, the life of a man is in his blood. So when Jesus is saying, eat my flesh and drink my blood, he's saying, consume me, read my word, worship me, praise me, get in my presence, learn me, study me, fellowship with me, have dinner with me, take upon my spirit, take upon my mind, take upon my fruit. I've given you the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Why would you choose the work of the flesh instead of my fruit? Because you are what you eat, right? The Bible talks about it's a lifestyle change, right? To be born again, to be born again and to become a new creature, it is a lifestyle change. That's why we're renewed in the spirit of our mind. That's why if you see believers that say they're born again, but they're still living the old way they used to live, they're still worldly, they're still violent, they still fornicate, they're still doing drugs, still smoking, Still doing evil, thinking continually evil. They're lying to you. And the worst part is they're deceiving themselves. The Bible talks about he that think himself to be something when he has nothing only deceives himself. But we're going to bring it all together so you can see the mystery of the mark of the beast revealed. And I'm asking you in the name of Jesus Christ to get this video to as many people as possible in this last hour. Daniel chapter 3. Very, very interesting chapter. I'm going to paraphrase it because of time, but read it on your own time. In Daniel chapter 3, you have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego thrown into the fiery furnace. But why? There was a man named Nebuchadnezzar who was a foreshadow type of the Antichrist, right? Because he hoisted up an image and it actually equivalent. It actually formed 666 with the height and the size of it. If you do your studies, 666 is actually hidden in the statue, the image that Nebuchadnezzar told everybody to worship. He had musicians and famous people sound the trumpets and play music. And whoever heard the music, they would bow down and worship the image of the beast. And notice that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood firm. And because of that, they would not bow their knee. They were sent into the fiery furnace. But watch this. Nebuchadnezzar, who was a foreshadowed type of Antichrist, commanded the guards, the soldiers, to turn up the fire seven times in the furnace. This is a hidden revelation of the seven-year tribulation. That we will be in fire in the tribulation. It'll be terror, there'll be terror everywhere. Wars and famines and all crazy things happening. Persecution. Christians being locked up and murdered. Christians fleeing to the mountain. But Jesus appears to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the midst of the fire. This lets you know that the Son of God will be with us in the midst of this tribulation. Now we're not going to get into a debate about the rapture in this video. Don't lose focus. See, the enemy will always try to get you distracted with other topics like flat earth and tribulation and this, that. And you lose the meat of the message that way. We'll deal with that another day. Focus. 
So Nebuchadnezzar was a type of antichrist. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, where two or more are gathered in the midst. Jesus is there, right? In the name of Jesus. See, he appeared to them. We have to stay together, and Jesus will be with us in the fire of tribulation. But what if I told you in chapter 4, judgment comes on Nebuchadnezzar, and he becomes a beast. His nails grow out. He's living in the wilderness. The spirit of the beast, you see. The Antichrist represents the spirit and the image of the beast. So now we're going to bring it all together so you can see it for what it is. As I was meditating on this, and it all started to, it all started to come together. Remember what Paul said, I did not receive this by man, but I, was, I received it by revelation, he said. Jesus literally gave it to him. So I'm there downloading this revelation. And all glory to Christ, my best friend. We've seen how Paul went to war with beast. Hebrews mentions beast. Peter's, Peter talks about brute beast. Jude mentions beast. Titus mentions beasts. So what was really going on with Jesus Christ? I would like to present to you that when Jesus Christ was born, it says a body was prepared. We know that he was flesh and blood. Right? He was perfect on the earth, but he had to bring the flesh of Adam to the cross, right? When he said it is finished, what was he doing? He was destroying the power of the beast over man. You see? Uh, let's go deeper with it. Go to Mark chapter 1. Notice it says when Jesus was fasting, Mark, Mark 1, 13, and he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beasts. You see that? And angels ministered unto him. Why does it say he was with the wild beasts? See, there was a war going on. Jesus was not only fasting and warring against Satan, who was trying to attack him in his mind but couldn't because Jesus is the almighty but Jesus was also fighting his flesh because we read in Ecclesiastes that this flesh is a, this flesh is a beast. Come on. Paul said in Rome, go to Romans chapter 7 with me. Go to Romans 7 and we're going to bring this all together. You're going to see what it is. It's going to change the way you look at things. Romans 7. Watch this. Now you're going to see what Paul really meant. In Jesus' name. Verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For, that, for what I would, that I don't do. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I don't do. But the evil which I don't want, I do. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but the sin that dwells in me. You see that? For I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Pause right there. Pause. What Paul is saying is, why do you think we have to die daily? How many scriptures do you see in the word of God where it says, Crucif mortify the members, right? Paul said, I live, but not I, but Christ lives in me. Why does he say, I die daily? Why every day we got to deny ourselves and pick up the cross and follow after Christ? Could I present to you that this flesh is actually the beast? And although when Adam sinned and even Cain was corrupted, and all of mankind was corrupted, and obtained a image of the beast and the spirit of the beast and we started to change our nature changed 
This is why we have to do away with the nature of Adam, right? Jesus Christ took on the form of a body. In this case, flesh and blood was the beast. Jesus himself walked perfectly overcoming his flesh, which represents the beast. He fulfilled the law. He never sinned. The beast, his flesh, never got an over, never got authority over him. His flesh never dominated over him. Never ruled him. He was perfect in the flesh. He's the only one that could subdue the beast, that is the flesh, perfectly. And because of that, he was able to destroy the beast at the cross. And that's why when we receive Jesus Christ, we start to be regenerated, you, you caught it, by the Holy Ghost. We start to be transformed. We become a new creature because we no longer walk in the curse of the beast. Even though this body is still the beast, we now have dominion over the beast through Jesus Christ. And we become manifested sons of God. And even though we're still operating in the flesh and we got to die to this thing every single day, we got to die to this beast, this flesh and blood every single day. Inside, we are manifested sons of God. I, I this is the great mystery. Jesus went to war with the beasts. Even when he was fasting, he was binding up the beast. So we're bringing this all together. And you notice that when Cain operated in the spirit of the beast, and his flesh is the beast, we read it all through the scriptures, Ecclesiastes. But God didn't want to do away with Adam and Cain because that was still his children. But God didn't want to do away with Adam because that's still his son. But he knew Adam was infected. He had to quarantine Adam until Jesus Christ, through prophecy, thousands of years later, would come in the flesh, overcome the beast, crucify the beast to the cross, therefore delivering Adam from the curse of the beast and setting his son and his child, setting his children free. Even Cain is a foreshadow that has to do with tribulation because when Cain operated in the spirit of the beast and murdered his son Abel, God placed a mark on him. Huh? Notice the Antichrist wants to play as God and put a mark on as many as possible. So now let's bring this all together. Let's bring it all together so we can see it for what it is. As I was meditating and I wrote this down, the Lord said to me, they're feeding off the beast now, but later he will feed off of them. This is why Jesus said, Satan roams around like a lion, seeking whom he may devour. You see the beast now. Go back to Galatians. I told y'all, I said, remind me about Galatians chapter 5. Let's go. Galatians 5, real quick. Let's reread it. I want let's reread this. I want to see if you catch it. In Jesus' name. 15. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. This I say, walk in the spirit. Why do we have to walk in the spirit? Why do we have to die daily? Because if we don't, the beast takes over our life. This flesh is not just flesh. It's the beast. And we will by nature act like a beast. We will bite and devour each other. You see, this is what happened to Adam. They took on the spirit of the beast. But they were still the children of God. So God had to prophesy and say, I'll save you, Adam. I will save you, Eve. And I'll save any one of your offspring that will receive my son. Ah, that will receive my son and get washed by the blood. He will conquer the beast by getting into the body of the beast. Ah. He'll get into the body of the beast. But he himself will not be the beast. Let's not think foolish here, saints. 
Jesus was in the body of the beast to destroy the beast. Remember the Matrix movies? What happened? Neo had to get into the man to destroy the virus, right? Jesus had to get into the flesh. He became flesh to destroy flesh, right? That's why all the people you see that are not saved, they're children of the beast. We are children of God. Huh? We are sons of God. That's what the letter of John says. We are manifested sons of God. But we're trapped in this beast body. That's why every day you're fighting, sister. Every day you're fighting, brother. You're casting down thoughts because the beast shares the house with you. Oh, Lord. But you are what you eat. Ah, you are what you eat. If you're feeding, oh, I can't do it yet, Lord. Please, Father God, help me more. I can't do it yet. I got to bring it all together. I got to culminate this so you see it for what it is. Why did I show you Jesus when he said, if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, I will dwell in you and you will dwell in me. And we already, we already established that the, his blood, his, the life of a man is in his blood. That's what Leviticus says. So this means when he said, eat my flesh and drink my blood, he was saying, receive me, receive my life, receive my mind, receive my character, receive my personality, love the things I love and hate the things I hate. I will, he says, if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, I will dwell in you and you will live in me. Didn't it say that in the gospel of John chapter six? This means, listen to this mystery that you're not going to find online. By default, if you're not feeding off the flesh of Christ, you're feeding off the flesh of the beast. Are you seeing it now? When Satan is making you, when Satan is trying to cause you to be a part of UFC and MMA and violence, Watching murder shows, fornication, murder music, drill music, world star, Call of Duty, violent video games. I mean, come on, look at video games. Now, there's a video game. You can be the murderer and walk around and just murder people. What you don't realize is you are feeding off the flesh of the beast. You see? Really what it is. Is God has presented two plates to you. To the right he says this is my son. Feed off his flesh. Take upon his life. Into you. Because if you don't. By default. You will feed off the antichrist. Which is the flesh of the beast. You will feed off the appetite. Of the beast. You see. You see it. And you see, this is the mystery. This is why when Jesus Christ was casting out devils, people were foaming at the mouth, bodies were being torn. It's because the demons are in direct connection with the beast, or should we say the flesh of men. Demons live in the soul and they operate the beast like a construction worker operates a tractor. And this is why the gathering of demoniac cried out. This is why they were crying out. You can look at the flesh as an inside man for Satan. You see Judas. Judas was around Christ. He ate around Christ. Even dipped in his bowl. But he was an inside man working for the devil. Your flesh is like an inside man for the enemy. That's why you have to walk in the spirit. There's a reason why everything is beast this, unleash the beast, beauty in the beast, Marshawn Lynch, beast mode. See, you're going to understand the mystery now. When you see demons being casted out in the four gospels or the book of Acts or modern day, especially if you're a part of this ministry, why do you think bodies are torn? People foam at the mouth and vomit. It's because the demons and the beast work together. The flesh is the beast. And the demons get into the beast and operate it like a construction worker does a tractor or a truck. 
This is why the flesh acts up when you go to fast. When you go to read, you get weird thoughts. You yawn. You get tired. It's because the beast is alive. The beast is this outward body that your true spirit man lives inside. And the whole job of the beast is to distract you and take you away from focusing on Christ. This is why you have to die daily because you're literally walking with this beast every single day. It's called the flesh. And the demons operate through the flesh. So when you hear about people having foam in the mouth and bodies being torn and vomiting, it's because not only are the demons being casted out, but the physical flesh, the beast that's alive is also trembling at the presence of Christ. And this is why if you look all over the place, everything is the beast. Unleash the beast. Marshall Lynch with beast mode. Beauty in the beast. Feeding on the beast. Everything is beast this and beast that. But at least now you know why. I started meditating even deeper on this. Yes, saints, it goes deeper. We're going to show you without a shadow of a doubt how he's going to cause so many to receive the mark of the beast. Okay? Because you are what you eat. When the Antichrist, the beast man, all right, let's break it down so we can have a greater understanding. I perceive some of you are struggling with this. You have Jesus Christ, the Son of God, right? You have God the Father, and you have the Holy Spirit. If you worship Jesus Christ, you give glory to God the Father, and the Holy Spirit lives in you as you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You get it? So you worship the man God. Right? God as man, Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, will inhabit your temple because you're worshiping and accepting and receiving Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you'll give the glory to God the Father, right? Satan wants to mimic and, and mock this, but copy it. He wants you to worship the man Antichrist, just like there's a man Christ. He wants you to worship this literal man that'll come on the scene, and when you... And God forbid, when a person does this, the spirit of Antichrist will enter them. Just like when you worship Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes into you. Whoever worships the beast, the, the spirit of the Antichrist or the unholy beast spirit will enter them and they will give glory to Satan as their father. Can you see the parallel? So this means that whatever you're feeding off of, if you're feeding off the flesh and the blood of Jesus Christ, you will reject the mark of the beast. And you, will, you would rather die than take that. Because the beast, is, huh, the beast is not in you. This may be the beast, but he's not in you dominating. You have authority through Christ who's on the inside. But if God have mercy... Y'all out there that are playing with God, you watching worldly shows, fornication, gossiping, watching murder, watching murder movies, murder shows, violence, MMA, UFC, playing Call of Duty, murder, shoot 'em up games, war games, violence, violence, violence. You're feeding off the beast, and he will be so strong in you that when the mark is initiated. It'll be too late. You will gravitate to that which you're attracted to. But we got to go one step deeper. I noticed there's a lot of movies and shows, right? You got this, this stupid show, Stranger Things, right? You notice at the end of the show, it is revealed that this beast creature was made up of all the people. That's how his body was formed by all the souls and the, the, the people themselves, the victims, made his body. You see? There's another movie called Phantoms with Ben Affleck. I'm not, I'm not saying watch the movie. But there's a principality demon that takes over this village, uh, excuse me, this town, and Jesus is even mocked in it. 
That's how you know how serious they are in Hollywood. They even use the name Baal. But at the very end, the man says, show yourself. And this principality shows up. All the people are standing there. Right? All the victims that have been taken by this beast. And they all turn and they become one thing. And the thing creates the body of the beast. Where am I going with this? I'm going to show you right now. There are two bodies on this earth. That's it. You have the body of Christ. Write these down. I'm not going to go through them all. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Read the whole chapter. Romans chapter 12 verse 4 through 5. Ephesians chapter 4 16. Colossians 1 18. Ephesians 1 verse 20 to 23. Ephesians 3 6. Colossians 2 18 to 19. And Ephesians 5 23 to 30. We'll read Colossians 1 18. Let's at least read one or two. Just real quick. Colossians 1.18, look at what it says. In Jesus' name. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. That in all things he might have the preeminence. So these scriptures I just gave you shows and proves without a shadow of a doubt that we are the body of Jesus Christ. You follow? So together we become the actual body of Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay, so we're the body of Christ. But what about the mind of Christ? I want you to write down Philippians 4.8. It talks about what to think and meditate on to keep you in the mind of Christ. I want you to write down 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 to 16. And we're going to read Philippians chapter 2. Take a walk with me. I told you this message is going to change your life. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That means not only are we the body of Christ, but we have to have the mind of Christ. Let's go one step deeper. What about the image of Christ? Well, we know in Colossians 1, go to Colossians 1. I know I'm going fast, okay? But I have to. I got a lot to get in here. Verse 15. Jesus Christ now, verse 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Listen, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Do you hear this? So Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God. But are we? Okay, so let's break this down. So Jesus Christ is the image of God, the father. But are we supposed to be manifested into the image of Christ? Let's see what the scripture says. First off, God made man in his image. Genesis chapter 1, right there, we can stop it. But I'm going to give you some scriptures. Romans 8, 29 to 30. 1 Corinthians 15, 48 to 49. Philippians 3, 21. And we're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Let's go. That's what I like to do. I'll give you all the scriptures and I'll just read one or two out of them to save time. But please read the scriptures. Read them. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Look at what it says. In verse 18. But we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. See, we become the image of Christ just as Christ is the image of God, the father. So now let's let's just break this down. We become the body of Christ. We have we receive the mind of Christ and we become the image of Christ. Are you catching it? By default. Now, why is Stranger Things showing the monster at the end taking on all the people to form his body and image? Why is Phantoms and other movies and shows like Matrix making it where they consume all the people to create the body of the enemy? Because Hollywood, 
The occult knows what's going on through, through hidden knowledge of the occult and masonry and all of that. The Illuminati know already a lot of the stuff that's hidden in darkness. But they don't want you to know it. But thanks be to Christ who shines the light and reveals it. And reveals it unto his servants to give to you. Glory be to Christ Jesus, the Lord God of heaven and earth. Are you ready for it? Let's recap the mark of the beast. Everybody says, oh, the image of the beast is the TV, right? The mark of the beast is the microchip or the RFID. Now, we're not going to discard that. You can't take the chip. You can't take the biometric system that's coming. But that's just the tip of it. Let me show you the root of it that most of these YouTubers don't want to deal with. Because they're not spending time in the presence of Christ. They're more concerned about making YouTube money or fascinating you. Or, or making a self or making image for themselves instead of seeking the face of God to get the wisdom and knowledge and the revelations to give you to change your life. Are you ready for it? The two bodies are the body of Christ on the earth and the body of the beast. Remember, Nebuchadnezzar, it was a statue. It was a stiff, dead image that he wanted all to worship. How could this image of the beast be made alive? Now, if you remember the video I did where we talked about AI and the supercomputer and how the beast will become alive. But now the Lord Jesus Christ is revealing me even revealing unto me even deeper mysteries. Are you ready for it? If those all people, whether they go to a church or not, that feed off the flesh of the beast instead of the flesh of Christ, all those that feed off the flesh of the beast by consuming what he likes what is his evil fruit what is his evil mind his evil personality the same way we are to feed off of the flesh and blood of christ in the spirit by reading the word of god worshiping him praying and fasting hating what he hates and loving what he loves we become the body of christ we receive the mind of christ and we are made into the image of Christ. By default, all those that feed off of the beast, watching murder shows and movies, listening to murder music, fornication, all flesh, right? All idolatry, all lies and hypocrisy, all the image of the beast, right? All that pertains to feeding off of the flesh of the beast and his blood, they take on the mind of the beast. They take on the mind of the beast. They become the body of the beast. And they become the image of the beast that was made alive. So the mystery of the image of the beast. Is that everyone you walk by every single day. God forbid it better not be you. Every single person still lost without hope. Or claiming to be Christian, but living a sinful life. Anybody feeding off of the flesh of the beast is the image of the beast. Revelation says, listen. This is the mystery that Satan don't want you to know. Listen, verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Let's look beyond AI and supercomputers. Let's look beyond the image being a screen. What if the image that's alive is all the flesh and blood human beings that, took an, that are the temple of the beast spirit? What do I mean by that? We know that in, in the book of uh, Corinthians, it says that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, right? 
Well, in Luke 22, it says that Judas, it says that Satan entered into Judas. That means that Satan can enter into a human being and take over that body or temple if God allows it, if they're living wicked. But what about 2 Thessalonians? Go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm going to show you something. This became a very in-depth study for a reason. 2 Thessalonians 2. Look at what it says. Look at what it says. Verse 4. Let's just start from verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, by the gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind, nor be troubled, neither by spirit, nor word, nor by letter, as from us that the day of Christ is at hand. Because, you see, that was 2,000 years ago. We're now living in the day of Christ. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there be a what? Falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. You see that this is the beast. But there's also the spirit of Antichrist. We read that in the letter of John. I'm ho I hope you read that before. He says the spirit of Antichrist is already. And there be many Antichrists. But it's the spirit of Antichrist. And then there's people that inhabit the spirit. Because they become the temple of the spirit of the Antichrist. Right? But look what it says here. Look what it says here. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he as God sits in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. But wait a minute. What temple are we talking about? Do we honestly think this is just talking about a physical temple that's being built right now as we speak? But if that temple is being built by people who reject the son of God and they're still killing lambs, what's God got to do with that temple? Or could it be that the temple being the people, because we're the temple, right? We're a living temple, that the spirit of the Antichrist will sit in the temples of people claiming to be God. Because that's what he really wants. The spirit of the beast who lived in Adam wants to live in every single person on the earth. He wants to take over. And the revelation is this. When you feed off a... I feel you, Lord. When you feed off of Christ and eat his flesh and drink his blood and the spirit because you take upon his life and you walk in his ways, you follow after him, you fight the flesh or the beast and you're living after Christ. What happens is Christ is growing on the inside, taking over the temple. Don't lose me here. He's taking over your temple. This is why if you read in the word of God of John, if you read it, Man. Go to Matthew 21, 12. I'm going to show you. Watch this. As Jesus Christ is growing on the inside of us, this is what is going on. Go to Matthew chapter 21. Matthew 21, verse 12. Look at what it says. In Jesus' mighty name. We're going to read a little bit before it, though. Let's read verse 12. And Jesus went in unto the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables and the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. But what were they selling and buying? If you read it, they were selling and buying all type of animals in the temple of God. So in the spirit realm now, the same way, let me tell you why Jesus Christ was so angry. It wasn't just that they were making the father's house a marketplace with money, but also that they brought that spirit of the beast, bringing animals into the temple. It was a declaration in the spirit that the beast spirit is in the temple. So the same way Jesus Christ enters inside of us, and the more we pray, the more we fast, the more we feed off of his word, the more we eat his flesh, the more we drink his blood and receive his life, the more he grows. Paul said in his letter that Christ is being formed in us. He's expanding in us. He's driving out the spirit of the beast out of us with the whips, just like he drove the animals out of the temple. You see, 
This is the same reason that Jesus was born in a manger around animals. He has to be born in the midst of us around our animal beast nature. You see, we're like beasts. So he has to be born inside of us. Our heart is the manger. You see, and he grows and pushes the beast out of us. Even though the flesh is still a part of the beast's curse, but he takes out the spirit of the beast. He takes out the character of the beast. The more we gravitate and live with Christ, the Son of God, the less we think like the beast, the less we operate like the beast. We don't feed off the beast. This is why Stephen, before he was stoned, had the face of an angel. Because Christ was so glorified in him that his face shone as the manifested son of God. They no longer seen the physical face. This, this is a physical flesh and blood face. This is the face of, a, of the beast. You understand? All this flesh and blood is part of the curse of the beast. But the son of God on the inside manifested off of his face. Wow. So what this means, this is the mystery. That all these people that are living in sin, claiming to be Christians, or just lost people in general, they all looking at YouTube videos about what is the mark of the beast? What could be the image of the beast? While they're feeding off the flesh of the beast by loving violence, by loving fornication, lying, stealing, slandering, blasphemy, watching wicked movies, wicked shows, listening to wicked music, playing wicked video games. They don't even realize that while they're investigating, trying to find out what the image of the beast is, they don't even realize that they are the image of the beast that's alive. That the same way all the believers of Christ come together and form the body of Jesus Christ, those that feed off the beast come together and form the body of the beast. You see? The human beings who reject Christ, not just with their word, but their actions, they are the body of the beast. They are the image of the beast. They have the mind of the beast. They have the fruit of the beast. That the Bible says the unfruitful works, they have the demonic fruit of the beast, the rotten fruit of the beast, right? The works of the flesh, it's called. They are the image of the beast. And the reason why they're going to take the mark, whether it's the microchip or biometrics, both you cannot take. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? It's because they're already the image of the beast. They're going to gladly take it because when persecution rises up, when the threat of death rises up, they're going to choose their beast instead of Christ. They're going to choose that instead of eternity because they've been feeding off. Listen to me. They've been feeding off the flesh of the beast so long. They've been walking in the mind of the beast so long. All the while pretending to be Christian, going to a Sunday building, that when the mark of the beast rises up, and the man antichrist, the physical man beast, when he speaks to the image of the beast, which is all the human beings that reject Christ and feed off the beast, they will take the mark because they're already filled with the beast. Because as you've heard, you are what you eat. And if you've been eating the beast, then you are the beast. If you've been feeding off Christ, that's why the Bible says we must be like Christ. We become the body of Christ because we feed off of what we are. You, you are what you eat. Do you see it now? So it's beyond just a statue. It's beyond just the TV being the image of the beast. It's beyond being a supercomputers and AI and matrix stuff. No, it's deeper than that. God had to take me to a new level of understanding. That all those that reject Christ by their lifestyle. I have to say lifestyle because there's many that don't reject them with their mouth. But they reject them in their heart. They reject them in their mind. They reject them with their eyes, with what they watch. They reject them in their ears by what they hear. They reject them in the feet because they're quick to run to violence. These six things does the Lord hate. Those who reject Christ. 
by default, are the body of the beast. They're the body of the Antichrist. They are the image of the beast that has been made alive. And those who do not worship the beast. I didn't even get into this, and a lot of you already know this, but did you know the internal DNA of a man? If you look up, if you look up carbon-12 in every human being on the planet, it's six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. 666 is instilled into the flesh of man. This is why you must be born again. This is why in these movies, they got the creatures, their bodies are from the humans, from, you know, the blob. And all of these movies where Satan, these principalities, they're formed by the human beings, make up the body of those monsters. Because they're mocking you to your face and you're not even seeing it. They're saying you are the image of the beast. How foolish of you human beings. You try to debate over what the image of the beast is. What the mark of the beast is going to be. All the while your wicked lifestyle has made you the image of the beast that has been made living. And those that will grab up Christians and put them to death are the image of the beast saying if you don't worship the anthropos of sin. If you don't take this mark, me as an image of the beast will put you to death. You see it now. You see it now. How could your life be the same after a message like this? And this is the importance of fasting. Because when you fast, you're denying this flesh which is the beast. You're saying, you don't run my life. I fast to bind you and silence you. This is why when Jesus was fasting in Mark, it, in the word, it says that he was in the wilderness, not only with Satan, but he was with the beasts. You see, there's a reason it's said there, because Jesus went to war with the image of the beast. And hallelujah, that through Christ, he had the victory. Hallelujah, that Jesus Christ had the victory. The only one who could ever do it, the only one that could overcome this flesh or the beast. The only one that could be utterly the temple of the Holy Ghost all the time. The word of God says Jesus was the only one given the Holy Spirit without measure. That means he always was filled with the Holy Spirit. He was always the temple of God. Never was he the temple of the spirit of the beast. Never did the beast have dominion over him. He was always in full control and authority over the flesh and over the beast. Even in the God in the Gethsemane, when he was wrestling with the beast, this flesh. See, the beast was trembling, but Jesus was in the beast operating it like, you see how like a construction worker gets inside of one of those machines that ee, picks things up. Jesus entered into this flesh, a beast, and took over and said, you shut up, flesh. You do what I say. Beast, you will obey me. I have dominion over you. I ain't Adam. I'm the last Adam. I'm putting Adam to the cross, the Bible says. Jesus says it is finished. He broke the power of the beast but yet he lays it at your feet and says you choose you can either come with me and become the image of God through me get the mind of God through me the fruit of the Holy Spirit through me or by default you'll stay in the world lost without hope you will be the beast you will become the image of the beast you will receive the mark of the beast. Notice it's in the forehead and in the right hand. Everybody thinks it's just a chip. Listen, you can't take a chip. I'm not, re I'm not disregarding that. But the mind represents what you think. Do you think as the beast? What do, you what do you love to watch on TV? What do you watch on your phone? What is it you feed off of? Your hands represent your actions. What do you do? Whose power do you obtain? It's beyond the chip. God says mark those on the forehead in Revelations. You see? Because those who reject the image of the beast and refuse to be the image of the beast, they are the image of Christ now. You see? We have the mind of Christ and we are the body of Christ. So God marks us just as Satan marks his. You know, I was even thinking of the woman... In the gospel where Jesus said, she asked for, for the Lord to help her. And he said, this food is not meant for the dogs. But she said, true, but even the dogs get the crumbs. Jesus at that moment was dealing with the beast. Speaking to her as a beast. But yet her wisdom. See, this is what I love about God. You ever see like a parent, like 
Okay, let me let me give this analogy and then we got to pray. The prayer is so important to get done. You notice a parent, right? Their child could have the worst God have mercy, but it's just an example. A parent could see someone at work who has a terrible contagious disease and they'll stay away from that person. Let your bro stay away from me, man. But if that same person is a parent and their child has that same disease, they won't care. That mother will hold her child. That father will hold his child. Oh, Lord. He or she will hold their child, disregarding the fact they're infected. This is how I see God the Father. The Lord Jesus Christ seen Adam and said, you've been infected. But I'm not going to destroy you. I'm going to give you a way out. I'm going to destroy the beast who took over you. But Adam, I'm going to make a way out for your spirit. We got to do away with the flesh, Adam. Oh, Lord, this is so amazing. You better, if you love Christ, you better help spread this video. God said, Adam, I must destroy your body. The body must be destroyed because it's now the image of the beast. And many thousands of years later, this sat Satan will rule the earth through this man called the son of perdition. And all these people will be the image of the beast and worship. See, Adam, I'm going to destroy the beast to the cross. I'm going to save you, Adam. Thousands of years later, through Jesus Christ, my mighty son. But he didn't disregard Adam because he was, he was able to save Adam's soul and spirit. And now our bodies have been changed, the Bible says. Even it says, when Jesus returns, we shall be like him. But for now, we are in this beast body. But the difference is, is now the beast don't have authority over us through Christ. We have authority over the beast. We have the choice to die to the beast every single day. Now, the difference between the two bodies, you have the body of Christ and the body of the world or the body of the beast, right? It's just like David and Goliath. If you notice, David was much shorter and smaller in stature because David represents the body of Christ and Goliath represents the body of the beast in the end days. Although we are smaller and we are outnumbered, brothers and sisters, we have the victory. We have a smooth stone called Jesus Christ, the rock. And we have conquered Goliath already. So do not be afraid. Although you are of the smaller body, and I know the world, the beast is a giant body. The beast is at your job. The beast is some of your neighbors. The beast is in a lot of these so-called ministries. The beast is online, on YouTube channels. The beast is everywhere. Loving violence. Loving to be puffed up. It ain't just a lover of violence. The beast is in a lot of these false Christians that love to lift themselves up like Lucifer. They love to be the one. They're very prideful. They're the image of the beast. Saints of God, you better save your soul by giving it to Jesus Christ. He's the only one. Now unto him, the Bible says, that's able to save our souls and keep us from falling. So we're going to do this prayer right now. And this is going to be supernatural. So better take this serious or just shut the video off. Because I can keep going on and on and on about this revelation. But we're going to recap, right? I don't want to recap UFC MMA. If you're still stuck on that, then there's something wrong with you. Yes, they're in a cult. It's pancreation, all of that. It was offered up to paganism and false gods. You're a part of it, you're a pagan. We know the octagon was an occult ritual, bloodshed on the altar in the ring. Leave that alone. Let's now get into the main portion of the message that is able to save your soul what image are you be honest with God right now what do you watch what do you listen to what do you feed off of will determine what body you're in are you feeding off the word of God do you love righteousness and holiness and whatever is good whatever is pure do you think on these things like Philippians says do you love violence do you love drama do you love the lie do you steal do you lift yourself up in religion like Pharisees? Do you love putting other people down? Do you have trouble forgiving? Are you bitter? Are you hateful? Are you prideful? Do you love violence? Do you love fornication and porno? Then you are the image of the beast. You have been consuming the flesh of the beast. 
is what's interesting about it and what revelation dropped in my spirit is in the old testament if a beast stepped foot at the hem at the bottom of mount sinai they would have been put to death you understand this is supernatural because we now are the spiritual mount we are the spiritual mount sinai's Follow me now, because the Most High God descends upon us in the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Just as God descended upon Ma ah! just as God descended upon Mount Sinai in fire, He descends upon us in fire. You see, He's a consuming fire. And if that beast tries to touch any part of us, he is to be put to death. So we have to put to death the beast every single day because we are holy ground to the Most High God. He is not allowed with us. So what do you feed off? My precious brothers and sisters, what do you feed off? If you're reading your word, if you're abstaining from sin, if you hate the ways of the world, if you're worshiping Christ and you're living for him, you're not forsaking fellowship, you're doing what you're supposed to. I'm here to encourage you that you've been feeding off the flesh and blood of Jesus, or should I say receiving his life, becoming his body, becoming his mind, and becoming his image. And I want to say hallelujah, congratulations, keep going. You are in direct war against the beast, the body of the beast, you see. You're outnumbered, but don't you worry about a thing. You keep going because the word of God says there will be those that will put you to death thinking they're doing God's service. They're, they're going to be They're going to be blinded. They're going to hate you. And the reason many hate you now, the reason you're so persecuted now is because you are the image of Christ and they are the image of the beast. So there is a direct fight. What did the word of God say? The spirit and the flesh are always fighting. You are of the spirit. They are of the beast. You see, they feed off the beast. They feed off the flesh of the antichrist spirit. You see, but if you've been living in sin and you think you're going to make it in, you have become the living image of the beast. It's about the worship of man. Because the character of Satan, who is Lucifer, he wanted to lift himself up as God and be worshipped. This is why they want to tell you you're all gods in the new age. It's all the image of the beast, you see? This is why Peter says we must have the divine nature because we have to burn out the nature of Adam, that beast, flesh, every day is warring against us. But you can have the victory, you see? Here, here's the thing. There's a deeper revelation. We're about to pray. Just listen. There's a deeper revelation when Paul and the men of God were locked up in prisons. It represented the flesh. They were locked up inside the flesh, but they were praising on the inside because they knew they were not flesh, really. This is just a vessel they're in temporarily. This is going to change because Jesus destroyed this to the cross. You see? But he has to also destroy it through all of us. We all have to carry the cross and nail our own beast to the cross. Ah! Nail our own beast to the cross. But they're praising in the prison. Notice that the prison's door is broke. See, you can be trapped in this flesh, this beast, like a prison, right? But you're on the inside rejoicing as a spirit being, a manifested son of God, male or female. You're a manifested son of God. And you're praising on the inside of this beast's flesh. And you're breaking the flesh like the doors of the prison, you see? <laughs> this is why the Bible says mortify your members. That means kill your members. This is why Paul said, I live but not I, but Christ lives in me. This is why Paul says you must die daily. Why? Every day you wake up, the question is going to be, sister, brother, are you going to wake up to the image of the beast or the image of Christ? Which one will you serve? Will you crucify and kill the beast that day? Every day is a new day. You got to kill the beast every morning you wake up. When you wake up, when you get on your knees and say, I die to the beast. I die to the image of the beast and I mortify my members. I refuse to be, the, to be the image of the beast today. I am the image of Christ. I am the body of Christ. I am the mind of Christ. I will walk in the spirit and not after the flesh. Do you see it now? 
Let me say it one step further before we pray, sister. The reason why Satan sent that man to hit on you to try to have sex with you is because the devil knows that you now are the image of Christ. You've been walking in the spirit. And if that man, God have mercy, can commit fornication with you through that act, you will transform into the image of the beast instead of what you were, the image of Christ. Hi. Look at it this way. You see like a tell eye vision? This thing is bugging. Phone is spazzing out. No wonder, right? It's a spiritual war, y'all. You see the tell eye vision? You can change a channel. You can stop on a Skinner Max, nasty fornication or a murder movie, but with the push of a button, go to National Geographics where there's, with the push of a button, go to a channel where it's peaceful and there's a stream. You can change the channel. The same thing in the spirit realm, like a TV is an image really, right? If you look at it, there's a mystery there. In the TV, if you look deep, like under a magnifying glass, it's tons of thousands of little lights. And these lights make an agreement to become one to make the image on the screen. So let's say, like, see right here, right? There's a whole bunch of lights making the image of my color, of my skin complexion, and the dark for the beard. And there's a bunch of lights here forming all around the red circle. You see, it's all little lights coming to an agreement to form the image. This is what it is like in the spirit. Jesus Christ brings us all together to form his image. His image. Right. But the Antichrist does the same thing. So what he's trying to do to you, brothers and sisters, is he knows you're walking in the spirit. He knows you're the image of Christ. But what he wants to try to do is grab the remote control and change your channel and make you the image of the beast instead of Christ on that day. So, brother, that woman came into lust after you because Satan is using her to change you from the image of Christ and change the channel to make you the image of the of the beast that day. You see. That man wants to fight with you, bro. Sister, that woman on the job wants to get you in the flesh because the demons in her want to make you into the image of the beast. Don't fall for it. Walk in the spirit. Don't be easily provoked. The more you study the word, the more you pray, the more you feed off of Christ, the less that nature of the beast will have dominion over you because you gave it up to Christ. Christ already conquered that beast. He already crucified it to the cross. He destroyed it when he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. He let the flesh know I ain't feeding you nothing, you beast. Remember, he just simply took on a body. Jesus Christ is far beyond what you think he is. But remember, there was no sin in him. He never sinned, but he took on the body because he had to bring it to the cross and kill it. You see? I want you to pray this with me. I'm going to start from the beginning and work our way through the whole prayer. Oh, say, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, forgive me of all my sins, known and unknown. Forgive me, Lord, for any time I've been feeding off the flesh of the beast, not even knowing that in doing so, I was receiving the life of the beast taking on the mind of the beast, becoming the body of the beast, and the image of the beast, which Revelations 13 prophesied. I repent, Lord. Please change me, Lord. I repent, Jesus Christ. Forgive me, Lord. Wash me in your holy blood. Wash my mind, body, soul, and spirit right now, Lord. Sprinkle me and save me. Lord, make me vomit up all the flesh of the beast. Right now in the spirit, I vomit up all the flesh of the beast. Everything of the beast that I've ever consumed, I vomit you and I spit you out. In the name of Jesus Christ, my, my camera just died, but saints of God, hear me. The microphone is still recording, so I'm going to keep this prayer going because I know how spiritual warfare works. Say, Lord, I vomit out the flesh of the beast. I reject being made into the image of the beast. Lord, I repent for having the appetite of the Antichrist and the beast. Loving violence, worldliness, fornication, and all evil. 
Lord, take it out of me, Jesus. I want to be the body of Christ, Lord Jesus. I want to feed off of your body and your blood. I want to receive the life of Christ which is in his blood. I want to study his word. I want to eat the bread of life. And I want you to be inside of me and me inside of you, Lord Jesus. I want to be in the image of Christ and not the image of the beast. I repent, Lord, if I've ever been attracted to any violence in UFC, MMA, horror movies, murder movies, murder shows, violence, violent video games, world star, all of these things that are designed to manifest and make me conform and made into the image of the beast. I stop it right here, right now. I declare, Jesus, that you put that beast to the cross. You destroyed the flesh. And I crucify my flesh right now. I mortify these members. And I declare open war against the beast and against his image. I am not the body of the beast. I am not the body of the Antichrist. I am the body of Jesus Christ. And I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. I am not the temple of the Antichrist spirit. I make a willful commitment to change my habits and to change my appetites by giving it to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, have dominion over me. Take over my being, Lord Jesus Christ. By faith, through the blood of the Lamb, I receive the mind that was in Christ right now. I declare that I am the body of Christ and a manifested Son of God right now. And I am the image of Christ according to the word of God right now. Make me hate what you hate, Lord Jesus, and love what you love. Because I know you are what you eat. And I know that if I feed off of you, Lord Jesus, I become your body. Now, Lord Jesus, I know the victory is here. When the mark of the beast rises up. You will be so strong in me that I will reject the mark even under the penalty of death. Because I've already died to self to begin with. And they'll only be cutting the head of the beast off. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus Christ. But they cannot cut the head of the spirit. They cannot cut the head of my spirit off. That is where Christ dwells. Lord, glorify yourself in my being. Even bring your glory to shine on the outside of this flesh. Like you did to Stephen when his face shined like that of an angel. I want to be an Abel and not a Cain, Lord Jesus Christ. I declare and I decree right now, right here, that I am not the image of the beast anymore. But I am the image of Christ. I am not the body of the Antichrist no more. But I am the body of Jesus Christ. I do not have the mind of Satan no more. But I now receive the same mind that was in Jesus Christ. Lord, purge me and cleanse me. Go through every part of my soul, in my heart, in my mind, in my spirit. Drive out any character of the beast out of me like you did in the temple when they were selling and buying. Lord, you are born in me. Push out the beast out of me, Lord. Push out the mind of the beast, the character of the beast, the appetites of the beast who bite and devour one another like you said in Galatians 5. I love you, Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to love your ways. I want to love the precious fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love and joy and peace and gentleness and meekness and temperance. Oh, God. Thank you for this liberating prayer. And thank you for your deliverance. I receive it right now.
In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Saints of God, even though my camera strangely just shut off on me. You seen not even too right before I prayed, the phone was acting weird. It was hemorrhaging and vibrating, going on and off. I had to literally throw it away from the table. And then all of a sudden, the camera dies. But thanks be to God, I have the mic still recording. Take this serious. Help spread these messages, and especially this one. Put it on your, 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 your social media. But pray over this message that the enemy don't stop it from getting to people. And for you that are in the fight with us, thank you for partnering up and helping this ministry grow. For praying for us, for supporting financially, for getting in the fight with us. And above everything, following after Christ. We want you to know we do not overlook what you have done and what you're doing and what you will do. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And what you do for him and his kingdom in this ministry, you will not lose your reward. Pray for us, saints. Rele releasing messages like this is no joke. The mystery that has been revealed unto you is something that many need to know about. We love you so much. And remember, Paul was warning us in Romans that every day you wake up, your flesh is this manifested beast, this cursed body that Adam and Eve became. But you're not that. This is just a vessel. You are a spirit being. You are a manifested son of God. Crucify your flesh daily. Mortify your members. Die to the appetite, the mind, the character, and the will of the beast every single day. And you will not become the image of the beast. Feed off the flesh and blood of Jesus by desiring him, talking with him, communing with him. Do communion. There's a reason why we're supposed to do communion. We're not talking Catholic stuff. Communion was way before them. They robbed and stole that from the true saints. Get yourself some grape juice and some matzah crackers and do communion at least once a week if you're a follower and living right. This is my flesh. Eat this in remembrance of me. This is my body that was broken. I broke the body of the beast. This is my blood that was shed for you. This is my life. Drink it. This is your declaration that Jesus is who you feed off of. And when you feed off of Jesus Christ, you start to receive his life and you start to change. I know it's a process, but don't give up, sister. Don't give up, brother. You got to realize you were the image of the beast before you knew about Christ. And now that you know about Christ, there's a war, but there's a slow transformation. You understand? That's why the Bible says you have been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. There's a transformation. You have to be patient. Keep feeding off of Christ. Keep reading the word. Keep fellowshipping with the saints. Keep praying and fasting. And the entire image of the beast will die off. And you will be the manifested son of God. Glorifying Christ. Becoming his image. Becoming his body. Receiving his mind. Now the only thing that will happen after that is every day you wake up, you'll simply have to just subdue the flesh. But now you'll be able to do it through Christ. Because he did it first. He overcame the flesh by entering into a flesh body. You overcome your flesh by entering into Christ and putting on him. Ah, there it is. The Bible says put on Christ. You put on Christ as your new flesh. Oh, my Lord, I see it. Really, if you think about it, your flesh is the flesh of Adam, right? Now that you're a new creature, you put on Jesus as your new flesh. So even though you're wrapped in this flesh on the outside, your spirit man is wrapped in the flesh of Jesus on the inside. And this is how you overcome even though you're still stuck in this, this temporal body. You see? That's why Paul says in Corinthians, there's celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies. 
One is temporary and one is eternal. I'm done, saints. I'm done. I love y'all so much. Don't take these messages for granted. We welcome you to, to, to fellowship with us. But don't take the Lord for granted. We love you so much. I'm very excited for your new journey, sister. For your new journey, brother. To walk in the image of Christ. Knowing that out there in the world, at the job, some of your family members... The reason why you're supposed to pray for them and not take it personal is because they're the image of the beast already. They're going to take the mark of the beast because they're the image of the beast. You see? So you have to pray for them that they will be changed and become saved and manifested into the image of Christ. But just know it's a war. And Satan is going to try to send people and try to send things to change you back to the image of the beast where he has dominion over you. Stay in the light. Stay in the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Stay in the image of Christ. And Satan can't touch you. He can't have dominion over you. But if you allow him to drag you out and wander you into the wilderness. Because notice the beasts are always the ones wandering in the wilderness. Don't let him do it. Just stay in Christ. Stay focused. In Jesus Christ's name, say, Lord Jesus, give me perfect love not to be afraid to die, even if it's the death. Give me perfect love not to be afraid to die, even if the mark of the beast is implemented. Before I die, Lord, I ask you to see me through all fear, all threats of the enemy, that I'll be dead to self and dead to the flesh, which is the beast. And I'll be alive in you. And I shall not fear. In Jesus Christ's name, Lord, I want to love you more than my own life. May I receive that right now by grace through faith in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. We love you all. Bless. I'm not here to sound pretty. I'm here to speak life to the dead. I shall not fear. I shall not fear. Even when death is near, I shall not fear. Even though the end of days are here, I shall not fear. Because I know my Lord, Jesus Christ is here. He walks inside me. He lives inside me. He walks beside me. He is with me. So I shall not fear the new world order. I shall not fear a guillotine. Oh no, I shall not be afraid when I walk through the shadows of death. I shall not be afraid when I walk through the valley of death. I shall not fear, 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 cause Jesus Christ is here, Yeshua is here, I shall not fear, 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 cause perfect love is here. The Holy Ghost is here I shall not fear I shall not fear Even when death is near I shall not fear Even though the end of days are here I shall not fear because I know my Lord, Jesus.
Jesus Christ is here. He walks inside me. He lives inside me. He walks beside me. He is with me. So I shall not fear the new world order. I shall not fear a guillotine. Oh no, I shall not be afraid when I walk through the shadows of death. I shall not be afraid when I walk through the valley of death. I shall not fear, 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 cause Jesus Christ is here, Yeshua is here, I shall not fear, 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 cause perfect love is here. The Holy Ghost is here. In Jesus Christ's name, stop being afraid. Stop being afraid.